Hello, everyone, and welcome to Winning Conversations. Today, we sit down with someone very special to me, my little cousin, Caesar Alarcon. CJ works as a youth leader in the youth group here at Heritage, also one of our very special interns. And we can't wait to have this conversation, so let's get into it. Oh, my gosh. We are doing this. We are so excited. <laughs> this is Daniel. I'm here with Andy. Hi. Hey. And we are here with someone. Actually, this is a conversation that I've been waiting to have. For all those that don't know, this is Caesar, mm -hmm. our one and CJ. only Caesar. Yep. Some have called him CJ. I will not. I will. I see this young man of God, and I'm calling him Caesar. I have cousin Caesar. privileges, though. I yeah, have family, family privileges. I family. can. I'm going to call him CJ. All right. Well, bro code means Caesar. Straight up. There it is. Straight up. You know, um, you and I met uh -huh. two years ago. Yep. And you were 19 at the time, I think mm -hmm. going on 20. Yep. You're 21 now. Yep. And I can honestly say you have such a calling of God in your life. Mm -hmm. Like it is awesome to see what I met at 19, who was like an awesome young man, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? To like someone now who's just chasing, who's uh, from all aesthetics is like, appears to be chasing yeah. after God oh, and what has, like what he has in your life. Like, mm -hmm. And so- Thank you. No, it's- it's, yeah, let's brag on CJ for a minute. Yeah, I please. This is amazing. <laughs> I look at. I, I wish I had been in the same place. So I said, oh. as someone who didn't go after the Lord when mm -hmm. He was called, or when had the unctions and everything else, kind of let the world do a little number. Mm -hmm. Like it's awesome to see someone your age doing it, and like so, like I kind of want like like what is that like? How did you get to this spot of like yeah. going hard after the Lord? Like what? Like what has transitioned? Yeah. From like when I met you, nineteen. I mean, you can be right. before that clearly, but. Um, well, I mean, I grew up in church, and so, I mean, my parents served in church, whether it was, like, in worship. I remember, like, when I was, like, maybe, like, five or six, my parents would bring some of the youth over, over my house. I remember seeing them walking around, and uh, my cousins were always involved in church. My pa uh, my aunt, my uncle, or my pastors here. Um, so I kind of always se uh, seen and been around people in church, uh, growing up in church, remember at a young age having, you know, these experiences with God. I remember like being like maybe like five and in a church service. And it's kind of, the memory is kind of fuzzy, but I remember crying next to my mom. And I remember my mom like putting her hand over me. And she, I remember her just telling me, God, God just touched you. God just touched you. And I was like five and I'm like crying my eyes out. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool, mom. I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but uh, as time went on, I think, uh, maybe around like 11, 12, 13, I just started like kind of, you know, I started watching a lot of, you know, a lot of bad stuff and started hanging out with some like older people that I shouldn't have been hanging out with. And, uh, I think I was maybe about 13, maybe late 13 or early, early 14. I can't really remember, but, um, this is when I really believe God really started to work on my heart. Um, it was like one night I was at my house and, uh, I snuck out. I was 13. What? Yeah. I snuck <laughs> out. I know. I'll take back what I just said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, I snuck out and I, uh, I remember I was with a girl and, um, I won't go into too much detail about what happened, but I remember I was, I was in this car and, um, it was late at night and I remember I heard a voice say, CJ, stop. And I remember I looked up and I was looking for my dad because I, I, I thought it was my dad's voice. And I thought maybe my dad had like followed us or something. Mm. And I was like looking around. We were parked on the, on the end of the street. I was looking around Classic. for my dad. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in so much trouble. My dad is here. And I'm looking for my dad. And I couldn't find him, but I guess like the best way I could describe it, and this is when I believe I really heard the voice of God, is like it wasn't necessarily my dad's voice, but it was like a father voice. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking for my dad, like my earthly dad. And I think I, I, I knew God well enough at that point. Um, that I was like, mm, I feel like that may have been God. <laughs> God, is that you? Yeah, you know what I mean? And so but like I just- The situation is kind of cool, but also- Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Did I Come really hear? Right, right, right. So I'm like, I just I just remember feeling really like, just 
I just I, I felt I felt really guilty after that because I was like, oh, I, I, God, I think you can see what's happening here. I just remember just like <laughs> looking looking at the person was like, can you take me home? So I remember I went home, and uh, you know I climbed back into my bed. It's probably like six in the morning at this point. The sun's like maybe like just starting to peek out. I get in my bed, and I remember like climbing into my bed thinking like, yeah, I should feel a lot better about like what I'm you doing. Didn't get caught. Right. You know, like, you know, I finally, <laughs> you know, no one knows about what just happened. I feel like I should be feeling like the man, but I'm really not. And so I remember went to I went to sleep next morning. Uh my dad wakes me up. He's about to go to about to go to work. And, you know, he's just he has no idea what just happened just a mm. few hours before. You know, he's like, all right, son, love you. You know, I'll see you. I'll see you whenever. And so he goes off to work. And I was home by myself. This was, I think it was during the summer. And uh, I just remember walking around and just feeling like, wait, that's it? Like, I feel like I should be feeling a lot more satisfied, Mm -hmm. but I don't. And I, and I just, and I was so young. I mean, I mean, I was, I was 13. So I really didn't understand what I was feeling, but I was just like, this is what like all my friends talk about. This is this this is this is what happens in the music that I listen to. This is what happens in the in the in the stuff that yeah. I watch. Mm-hmm. I should be feeling a lot better, but I don't. I feel so empty. Mm-hmm. I felt empty. And um, fast forward, I think uh, we were gonna go to this um, camp was coming up, and so this is maybe may have been about a year later. Um, camp was coming up, and still, you know, I was like kind of like I felt like God was trying to talk to me during this time but I was just really ignoring him I really was just like I'm not gonna listen and um uh camp was coming up and I did not want to go to camp I did not want to go church to camp? camp church camp all right yeah here the, the church camp that we were that we used to go to here and uh I remember like we were so, we tried to like raise money for camp and I remember like I was like you know what I'm gonna just not raise money so then I cannot go to camp <laughs> and and so then got to get no money. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, so then like, I can't go, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I remember like, it was like one Sunday and I think I was trying to remember, I think this might've been like the last day to raise money for camp. And at this point, like in my head, it's like done. It's like, all right, cool. Like I've made it the last day to not go to camp. I'm not going to camp. And I felt really good about it too. And, um, <laughs> I think it was like during service at the very end, my mom came up to me and she was like, oh my gosh, son, somebody blessed you. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I was waiting for it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody blessed you. I was like, you. oh, you think you're not going, bro? Yeah, right. You thought. Yeah. Somebody blessed you and paid for all of your camp right now. And I just look at my mom like dead face and I'm like, oh, praise God. Awesome. Love that. And she's like, and she's like, she's like, you know what? You need to go thank them. You need to go thank them. Let's go find them right now. So she like grabs me by the hand and we're like chomping, you know, just like going straight to the lobby. And uh, I see the couple with big smiles on their faces and they're looking at me and they're like, yeah, we wanted to bless you, CJ. We heard that you uh, you didn't have enough money for <laughs> camp and like all this stuff. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, I was so close, bro. Like I was so close of not going. That's what the devil was saying. Yeah. And you were, um, he was so close to not getting you to go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And um, I was just like, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks love that. so much. You guys are the best. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, I was just 14 punk little kid. And um, I was like, all right, whatever. I'll go. And it's going to be like another experience and probably nothing's going to change. And so I like to make this joke. Like I got saved for the 97th time when I was 14 at church camp. Um, I just had some church camp in uh, Branson, Missouri. I don't even really remember exactly what the, like really what took place, but I just remember God literally wrecked me and made it stick, made it stick. And I think what really, what made it stick is I finally found him in this way of like, I need him. Mm -hmm. I need him. And I, at 14, I mean, I'm so young, but I was like, Lord, I am so insecure. I'm so, I'm full of anxiety and sadness. I, I, and and I feel all of these things really because of what I've put myself through. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And you're the only, you're the only one that's able to, to bring me out of this. And so at 14 years old, I was like, Lord, I I'm running to you. I'm running after you. And no matter what, I'm going to run after you more and more and more. And so, um, I gave my life to the Lord at 14. And then I want to say when I was about 15, um, I think I was in class, I was in school and I went to a college preparatory school all throughout uh, middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. And so college was always talked about, um, jobs. Our future was always talked about. I remember from like a young age, like at seventh grade doing projects about what colleges we wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. And so at 14, uh, no, I think I was 15, 15 at this time I'm sitting in class and, uh, my counselor was, uh, up at the front and he was talking about different jobs that, you know, that we were going to do in the future that we should do in the future, different colleges, all this stuff. And I remember like sitting there literally feeling so overwhelmed because I was like, wait, I'm supposed to be thinking about my future. I'm supposed to be thinking about what I'm supposed to do. And then, because like all I cared about at 15 really was probably just like soccer and girls. Like I wanted to be the next Ronaldo. I wanted to be like the next <laughs> Messi. Like that's where, like that's, I was like, oh, yeah, that's it. You Why know what I mean? You? Right, exactly. What else are you think about? Exactly. And so like <laughs> school, my future, I had like, I was like, it's like baby steps here. Like I just gave my life to the Lord, like mm -hmm. baby steps here. What did you want it? What did you want to be? I wanted to be Ronaldo. I like whenever you graduated high school, you really wanted to like play soccer. No, I straight up thought I was going to be the next Ronaldo. Like, I don't think I girls that. don't understand how brains don't develop for boys. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, I, like, I knew what I wanted to do when no, I was like, 10 years old. Like, dude, I was in high school. I was like, oh, no way. Like, like four years was eternity. Yeah. It didn't matter. Like I could oh, barely get yeah. past Wild. that hour, that minute. Straight up. Like I wasn't thinking forward thinking. Yeah, like, like, Absolutely like not. abstractly, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm for sure. Like, College. I thought I was yeah. so good, like, bro. No. Bro, I'm going to go pro playing something. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> things are going to work Sutton. out. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the way life goes, bro. Right, you yeah. know, you have a dream. You play video games. Right. It works out. Exactly. And that, yeah. No, Jeez. It's, that's, <laughs> that's literally what my thoughts. We're not trying. Like, I'm not, like, making, like, that's literally how you think. Yeah. And if you're around people, like, you're not around friends, like, oh, okay, here, guys. First, first quarter, yeah. we're going to be doing this. By third quarter, we'll be there. Right. Applications going out. We'll make sure we get this extracurricular work. Yeah. To look good for college. No way. All right, bro. No way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I just remember, like, sitting there thinking, like, you know, because now, for the first time, I'm having to, like, think a little bit about it. And I'm like, wait, okay, so I... If I'm not gonna be the next Ronaldo, what am I gonna be? <laughs> on that off um, chance, on yeah, the off on the chance, super this off Ronaldo chance, if this doesn't doesn't work, work right? Oh what's my what, God. What, right? Yeah, because it's B is messy, right? Clearly, <laughs> yeah, it goes Ronaldo for Plan A, B messy, C probably Jeter. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. All yeah, and um, I just I I remember going home to my mom, and I remember like crying. Straight up, like tears running down my face. I was like, "Mom, I don't know what I'm supposed to. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm gonna be when I grow up." Um, leading up to this point, I had always loved people, loved people. I loved talking to people, and whatever. Probably, there, most of the time, is probably bad advice for whatever whatever I was doing. But I loved giving <laughs> advice. I love trying to help people. You know, like what? I love that. I mean, what I good advice. advice? But I really. But I was you know giving I mean? it. I like yeah. that giving it. Exactly. I, I was. I was. You know, was just giving. to be straight up, what good advice really am I giving at 14, 15 years old? Like, oh, absolutely none. Exactly. Like, yeah. At least you're trying. Exactly. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> the heart was there. You yes. Know what I mean? The heart was definitely. You didn't ruin there. any lives. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> we want to talk to that one guy. And we were yeah. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> and so I, I knew that. I knew I loved people. I knew I loved helping people. I just didn't really like know really what it was going to like. I didn't, I didn't know what that looked like. And so I remember like talking to my mom about it, crying. I was like, mom, maybe I'm going to be like a therapist or something. I don't know. <laughs> that was really what I thought. That would have been At wild. At 15, all those yeah. checks. Like I like talking to people. I'm like helping right? people. What else? Therapist. Exactly. The Right, because I'm 15. I I'm on you. I know the thought process. Exactly. So I, I Thank you. Her, I'm like, I can tell you exactly what she thought. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. Went through the same thought process. Yeah. And so I remember just telling my mom that. And, I'm, and I remember she was like, well, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> 
well, well uh, like, oh, you know, let's put a pin in that. Yeah, yeah. let's, let's keep well, our options yeah, open. We'll hold, we'll hold that thought. It's a great idea. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know, hilarious. <laughs> I uh, she she was like she's like just just pray about it. You know, like God God's gonna show you. God's gonna tell you. And I was like, okay. And so spring break was coming up. I was fifteen. Um, my youth pastor, uh, Pastor Rick Solis, he was he invited me out to this like leadership thing that they were going to go on him and some other uh, youth leaders at the time and uh remember he asked me and i was like i was trying not to be rude about it but i didn't want to go and i was like i'll think about it i'll think about it and then he told my mom and <laughs> so he's smart you do it. that's how you <laughs> that's do, how you do it. it yeah just go to the parent go to the boss. yes like what am i asking this exactly. middle manager for? <laughs> you know exactly. like, let's go to the ceo <laughs> exactly and so I remember my mom told me, uh, she's like, hey, spring break, you're going to go on with Pastor Rick on this like leadership thing and because uh, he really wants you to go. And the night service, we, ha- we just worship literally in probably in a, in a room probably this size. And like, this is not big. Like, the room was not big. And it was packed full of, of some, you know, some students and our, our group. And um, I just remember for some reason this night, I to leading up to this, I was not dancing in church. Maybe I'll give like a half hand raise. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't full out there. The, the Lord was working on me. You know what I mean? And I love like the height of the hands. Yes. You taste yes. the walk. You're like, oh, no, no, no. Yes. I was not here like, yet. You know I was right I'm in the middle. Helping you move some boxes. <laughs> exactly. I'm helping you move some exactly. boxes. Exactly. <laughs> right. We're yeah. doing it. We're doing a. The Lord was working. Yeah. And so, dancing in church was like absurd to me. But for some reason, this night, I was, I literally got out of the aisle. I was standing on the side as they were doing worship, and I was dancing for the Lord. And I, I don't know why, just the Lord was really doing something to me Mm -hmm. on this night. And uh, I just remember, like, crying, like, mocos, vavas, just running down my face. If y'all don't know what that means. It's like basically like boogers. Boogers. We know Espanol, senor. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And so I'm like crying out to God. God is literally touching me in this moment of worship. And there, I guess the youth pastor at that time for that church or wherever we were got up and was like, if anybody inside this room wants to know what God has for them for the rest of their life, come up to this altar right now. And just a few weeks before this, I was having a conversation with my mom about like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't, you know, and I ran to that altar, ran up there. I remember just throwing up my hands fully. And I was like, God, what do you, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. And I've never heard anybody talk like this before, but that was literally my heart posture towards God. I was like, God, you are changing my life before my eyes. I am, I can, I, not only am I having this experience, but I can see you literally running after me. God, what do you want? And I just remember asking like, God, whatever you want, I'll do it. And at 15, God showed me a vision and please hear my heart. Cause it has nothing to do with what I, where I was in this vision, but it's what I was, who it was for. And in this vision, I saw myself on a stage and I could see the lights and I knew whatever I was doing on that stage, it was for God and for him only. And in that moment, I knew, God, I'm called to ministry. No, no matter what I, no matter what I'm doing, it's going to be for you and it's going to be for your kingdom. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't know necessarily what, what type of ministry that looked like. I didn't know what it was. And I just remember telling uh, Pastor Rick, like, I feel called to ministry. And it, and it finally made sense. It finally, this question, this uh, this thing that I've had, like, why do I love people so much? Why do I want to help people so much? It finally, it kind of clicked. It started to be, it started to click that I wanted to help people. Mm-hmm. I said, no, and I wanted to help people for God. And I wanted to reach as many people as I could for God. And, um, I just didn't know really what that looked like. Um, so maybe about when I was 16, uh, I remember telling that uh, telling that experience that I had with uh, an older cousin of mine 
that was uh, being a youth pastor at the time. It at, was not me. It was, yeah, I was it was like, like yeah, it no. was not me. All right. It was actually my it was actually my cousin Ryan. Okay. He was a youth pastor at the time for a church out down in Austin, Texas. And uh, he was a person that I really, I mean, I, I really began to be honest with and share these, you know, these experiences that I had with God to him. And I just remember he was like, you know what, man, next summer, I want you to come and kind of have this like internship type of thing with me. I want you to spend the rest of the the whole summer with me. Hmm. And I was like, cool. I was in my head. I was like, dude, I don't really know what it's going to look like, but spending a whole summer with my older cousin, bet, bro. Like, <laughs> let's do this. And so uh, I just remember going. And uh, like I said, he was a youth pastor at the time. And I remember sitting in on meetings. I was 16, sitting sitting in on meetings uh, that they would have. Uh, like the church leaders would have and uh, going to services and remember like helping out him with photography for the church. And we were going to, to a, a youth conference that summer. And I just remember spending the summer with him and uh, seeing how he loved his wife, seeing how he loved his family and how he loved people and seeing how all these, I just thought it was so cool to see how a group of church leaders got together and, they would, you know, Sunday mornings, all these people would come to the church and they would experience God. And I just would, and I saw community and I saw people hungry after God. And I remember just falling in love with it. And I was like, God, whatever is taking place right now, like these people are coming together in this house, in this church, and they're experiencing you. I want to be a part of it. I want to be called to the local church I want to help reach my community. And um, so at 16, I uh, I really felt a, a, a deep, deep calling for my community and for my church. And so uh, I felt, you know, I was like, Lord, I will be led to the local church. If that's, if that's where you're leading me, I will be led to the local church and I will serve the local church for the rest of my life. And so... Um, yeah, man. And so that's kind of where it's kind of been. And then fast forward, I guess uh, I was going to go, I was going to go to university. Uh, There's a couple of universities that I, I got into and that I was pretty excited uh, that I got in. And I just, you know, I never really felt a piece about it. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like, you know what, Lord, if I feel called to ministry, um, I just, I, I thought practically, why would I spend all this money to go to a university when I really just want to focus in on ministry and on, on, on the Bible and about like what I can learn about ministry. And so I was like, you know, I'm gonna go to Bible college. And that was a really big step for me because I cared a lot about what people thought about me. And so once again, I go to a school that's a college preparatory school. So all my friends are going to like these big universities, you know, um, mm -hmm. my girlfriend at the time was going to a big university and I was really, I kind of, the reason why I hesitated is so much about going to a Bible college and really even kind of being open and telling people I'm called to ministry. I feel called to ministry is because no one really understood what that meant. All my mm -hmm. friends really weren't believers. Whenever I remember your graduation and they were calling out like all, okay, this student, they're going yep. to this school. And yep. it was kind of like a Caesar Alarcon is going yep. to... And then it was like a pause, yeah. like, a, uh, is, am I reading this right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Going to his mother's house <laughs> after graduation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's kind of how it was. I was a JC kid. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> and, uh, and so, like, I just felt really, by, eventually through, halfway through my senior year, I finally was like, you know what? God, you're calling me. I'm going to do this boldly. I'm going to be obedient. And... I'm, I'm going to go to a Bible college. So at the time I was going to go to a Bible college out in LA. And, um, that's what I told everybody. We were walking down the hallways. They have like our, uh, like our senior picture up with all the schools that we're going into. And then the school that we accepted or whatever. And like mine was so-and-so Bible college. So everybody knew. I, well, no, what, what was the one in LA? Zoe Bible college. Oh, okay. All right. Zoe Bible college. <laughs> and, um, Everybody knew every like I remember like all my friends were like and honestly like my friends were really cool about it like I I had developed a really good relationship with some with some people in high school that um 
they were really supportive for as much as of what they could understand that yeah. I was like they're supported could be yeah right yeah mm-hmm. they were like cool bro you're gonna do what you want to do good for you that's like kind of how it was and so um I uh I remember COVID hit whatever i was i was a covid you graduating had a COVID graduation <laughs> COVID, dude yeah. Yeah. it was terrible it's brutal man terrible sounds awful yeah. but i'll be honest i'll be honest and i i was telling this to my aunt not too long ago <clears throat> that covid during that time of high school kind of really saved me it, it saved me a lot of stuff because you know leading up to that we were gonna like go on um like our senior trip and uh you know prom was gonna come up and you know, no, we were talking about this. Oh, was it us? We were talking okay, about we, this. Me and Andy were talking about this. And like all these different things were going to come, like all these parties. And it was like about mm. to go down. Like yeah, yeah. last hoorah. Yeah. Our last, our last hoorah of senior year was about to go down. Mm. And at Devil's this playground. point, at this point, I kind of like was like, you know what? I'll, I'll go into like ministry after high school, but I'm going to go hard right now. That's kind of <laughs> what I was like. I know it's no, super. It's, dude, it's man, normal. It is yeah. so yeah, normal. What you're saying is yeah. it's not that it's okay, process. but yeah. it's like yeah. a diet. I'm gonna start Monday, but so Saturday. Yes, yes. that's yes. exactly yes. how it was. That's exactly how it was. Yeah, and um, I, uh, yeah, I'm actually because COVID, you know, all that stuff got canceled. Mm-hmm. I mean, all my sports that I was in, literally seasons ended. Um, our senior, literally the day before we were gonna go on our senior trip, um, got canceled. Uh, prom got canceled we couldn't i couldn't see my friends i couldn't see my girlfriend at the time and like so like a lot of these things that um i know for a fact i probably would have gotten into i couldn't i couldn't and so um it's god's protection it's god's protection one thousand percent it was god protecting me yeah i just remember um i think finally just deciding you know what like i'm going to bible school this is what's happening and uh but you didn't end up going to bible school instead you chose to stay here right. and serve just jump into ministry right, right, right. and do the internship yep. work in the like full on do go work. hard without having to go right. to bible school and that might not have been that might not be the move that everybody should make some people mm-hmm. need to go to bible school but for mm-hmm. you that's what i mean you just went head first into it right yeah and it's pay i mean it's paying off yeah, yeah. yeah for sure yeah and i think because I was because of COVID happened. Um, the school out there, they were they were just it was just gonna be online, mm. and so for like the first semester or something, it's out in LA, and so I uh, I remember telling my mom, and I remember my mom was like, my parents were down, but they were like, okay, like if this is what you feel like God's telling you to do, we'll be supportive. <laughs> but I, but I could hear it in their voice, like but maybe you famous should words. Pray famous about words. It a little more. We'll, yes, exactly. And uh, I remember telling my uncle, like, "Hey, this is what I feel like God's telling me." And he was like, "You know what? How about this? How about you? Um, for the first like half, you'll you know you'll be here. Um, how about you come to the Bible school here, and you'll work and you'll save up money to go out there, you know." Good and I was like, dude. I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, it's not a bad, Pastor Justin. And <laughs> my, my bad. Uh, just, <laughs> I'm like, that's a good uncle advice, man. That's like, you know, yeah. most mostly uncles don't give great advice. But that's a good uncle advice, <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Justin. Yeah. Never mind. Pastor slash, uncle. Slash, slash Pastor right, uncle. Pastor exactly. uncle. And um, I was like, you know what? Okay, cool. I'll. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. I was a little bummed out that I wasn't gonna go sooner, but I was like, you know, it's not a bad idea to you know save some money up here and then mm-hmm. go out there. So that's what I did. I remember meeting um, with uh, Pastor Rick and uh, him proposing this internship to me. And he's like, you know what? We have this internship coming up. We know that you're going to be here for at least a semester. But all we ask of you is that you commit, that you commit to just one semester here at the doing the internship and also going to the Bible school here. And that's all we ask. And I was like, you know what? I'll do it. Like, what do I have to lose? It's it's, it's good experience sure. for just the next couple months, and I'm still leaving. Like, I was like almost making it like making it clear to everybody, I'll stay, but I'm still leaving. Don't forget, yeah. I am leaving. Yeah. And uh, literally during, I remember like talking to my um, to my friend Dylan, 
like working out and stuff. And we would talk about like, you know, school and life or whatever. And we're working out. And I remember like we were working out and I was just like starting to feel like this nudge, like to stay. Mm -hmm. And it kind of started to scare me because I was like, I don't want to stay. I was trying to run away. I didn't want to be here. I didn't, I didn't want to be in my hometown. I didn't want to be, I wanted to run. I wanted to get as far away as possible. And uh, God really, really, when I say he changed my heart and like completely 180 degrees changed my heart for this city, for this church, Mm -hmm. for this community, for the people in my church, for my youth group, he literally in just a few short months changed everything that I was trying to run away from. And, um, I was like, God, I really feel a deep calling to stay. So you had a four year relationship in high school that was not the easiest and it did not, what you had to walk through was not the easiest thing for you. But in the end, it, it definitely made you come out stronger. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, recently probably I'll say like three years ago, I went through a pretty hard breakup. Um, and I, I, leading up to this, I was thinking about like, okay, do I talk about it or do I not talk about it? Now I haven't talked to this girl in like almost two years. So, and we don't have any, we don't have any type of connection on social media or anything, even as friends, like even our friends that we were when we had, when we were together, I'm not even friends with them anymore. So, uh, I was thinking like, do I, do I want to talk about it? Do I not want to talk about it? And honestly, overcoming that heartbreak and that whole like period and relationship and everything that went down, it's a huge, huge, huge part of who I am and in my relationship with God. And so young yeah. love is brutal. I wouldn't young know. Young love is brutal. Was, yeah, we dated for like rumors. four years and then, and I, oh yeah, all throughout high school, there was a time when I was, I mean, I got saved at 14. So when there was a moment when, when I was like 17, I remember like kind of thinking like, you know what, like if I, I was like so in love with this girl, I was like kind of having the thought like, if I don't, I'm okay with kind of walking away from this like quote unquote religion thing and maybe like. Cause she just, was not Christian. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the thing. She wasn't, she wasn't a Christian. We were, she was actually Buddhist. It was, it's like literally like an opposite religion. I remember, I mean like, I remember there would be times we would like, I would talk about God, you know, or I mean, I was having experiences with God and God was working on me all throughout our relationship. And so she was like the closest person to me. So I'd be like, Hey, like tonight at youth, like this and that happened. And she was really sweet about it. Like she would listen, but she never understood. And so like, that was like a huge thing that I had to like lay down. And like, even when I broke up with her, cause I remember like telling her like, this is like, we're on like, we're unequally yoked and and like a lot of that stuff is like flying overhead so i remember like because she, she she didn't understand she had to her in her mind it was you just don't love me you don't you don't love me and you don't love me enough to stay with me and that was really hard really really hard because it was it had nothing to do with i mean we had spent four years with each other it had nothing to do with if i didn't love you it was i loved god more, more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. i loved god more most people don't make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. No. Most people are like, all right, Lord, yeah. you'll be there later, it. but this is now. Right. You just don't see the eternal. You only see the yeah. present. And especially in high school, mm-hmm. like the, the most oh significant my gosh. years yes. of your life, yeah. you spend with this one person. You're like, we are yeah. road dogs. Straight the, up. Right? Then you also we, feel like you might have wasted your time that's oh, yeah. with all that. Like, like, what was this for then? Yeah. Exactly. Do I give up? Do I just cut bait and run? Or yep. do I stick it out? Yep. I remember my senior year. I was like, I'm going to Bible college in LA. And part of that was, and I, 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 never, I never really shared this with anybody, but like part of that, if I could be 100% honest, it was to run away. Mm-hmm. I wanted to run away. I knew I was, I knew like in a couple months, I'm gonna have to make some really hard decisions in my life. I'm gonna have to break up with this girl. I'm gonna have to stop hanging out with these friends. I'm gonna have to do all these different things. And the transition period is gonna be so much easier if I just don't, if I'm if I can't see them, if I don't live in a five mile radius in this town with them, I'm gonna go to the opposite side of the country. I'm gonna forget all about all of this stuff. And 
then my heart started to literally change for this city, for this church, for my community, for my family. And I was like, oh my gosh, God, I feel like you want me to stay. Not even almost a year ago for really, for me to like finally open up everything, all the wounds, all this guilt and shame that I've had from this relationship to God. And I'm like, God, I need you to restore me. Mm -hmm. I need you to heal me. But the breakup was just one part of, Mm -hmm. of, of what God really needed to do to me. Yes, I needed to separate myself from her, but I really needed to lay some things down that I've, you know, that we did or that, you know, some like just things I needed. It had, I started to really understand that my relationship with her and the breakup, yes, the breakup was supposed to happen, but God was going to do so much more with me than mm-hmm. just the breakup. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And you just don't realize the emotional ties you make in those situations yeah. that you think, oh, well, physically, that was the issue. Yeah. As long as I can separate myself. Oh, my gosh. Spatially. Yes. The, the problem solved. And the, the real estate that was in your head was already bought and sold. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's the one, the stronghold. So yeah. The word, like, all right, I got to emotionally break this thing. But, yeah, that's a... Ugh. It's, but it's amazing you're 21 mm-hmm. realizing that. Mm-hmm. I was 37, bro. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well. <laughs> like I lived this that life for way longer mm. and lied yeah. myself for way longer and dig way more holes mm. <laughs> to get out of than yeah. you than you are at 21 going, right. oh, man, like, hey, Lord. Like, I didn't have that realization of, like, Lord, right. I'm going to go after you here. Yep. Like, it's amazing yeah. that you're hearing that at 21. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think there's information and experience that you have that is so important for the younger. Yeah. Like, like the high schooler is like what the difference between being called and then walking that out. Right. Like staying persistent, staying yep. consistent. Yep. Like there were so many opportunities between 14, yep. 15, yep. 16, 19, mm-hmm. 20 now yep. that you could have at any moment. All right, Lord. Yeah. Cause we, we have such a desire for the immediate Mm-hmm. Lord, you call me to ministry. Right. Where's my stage? Exactly. Where's my pulpit? Yeah. That's how we think. Yeah. We yeah. don't know ministry is every day walking it out. Yeah. Like your life is your ministry. Yeah. And so, especially for people in high school yeah. that 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 know that there's a call for more, uh-huh. there's a impatience, mm-hmm. and and during that impatience, there becomes disagreement right. or like, hey, Lord, right. Clearly not. Then I misheard you. Yeah. Yeah. Or it was something like that. But like you, like you're now in youth. You're teaching young adults. Yeah. Like they need to know what was the difference between it being a head thing right. and a heart thing. Like yeah. that, that like, yeah, I don't know if there's a, there's a, no, for sure. like a, a micro synopsis of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think that's really, for some listening to this, I would love for them to know yeah. what literal practical steps yeah. Caesar took to make sure his faith kept growing. Yeah. I think the, the number one, the first thing that came to my, my head was um, continually having a heart posture of humility like continually to understand like, okay, God, you are leading me, you are guiding me and your plan, your way is so much better than mine. And so what does that look like? I mean, for me, it was surrounding myself with people that I knew could speak life into me. Mm. And sometimes that means getting away from relationships. Sometimes that means getting away from certain friend groups Sometimes that means stop listening to that music. Sometimes that means stop watching those shows. Sometimes that means stop going to maybe that 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 side of town because you know when you go on that side of the town, certain you know some people are going to see you over there, and then you know you, you know what I mean. A hundred or, 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 or like, <laughs> and so so yeah. for me, it was just having a constant heart posture of humility. Okay, Lord, you lead me, you guide me, and so I I my friend group my consistent friend group and I love all I, cause I'm so, I'm so friends with um, a lot of some of my guy friends in high school. Um, I just, after high school, we really didn't see each other a whole lot. Um, and that was, and especially those first two, three years right after high school, it was super vital that I put myself because of some of the stuff that I was walking out. I needed to put myself around people that were going to speak life mm. to me like-minded yeah. people and some people that are not are always going to agree with what I necessarily fleshly want to do. So they're going to lift me up 
and they're gonna like you know what this is what the word says yeah i hear what you i hear what you're saying mm-hmm. um i understand what you're saying uh and i think that was what, what was really important and that's why i love um the people that i have um my community here in church especially my uncle and especially my pastor because he when i ever every anytime i go to him he, and his his testimony is so powerful but he always comes to me in a way with in love it's mm-hmm. like i hear you i see you i understand what you're saying this is what the word says so um i think if any young person is you know they know that they're called and they know you know that we're God. all called. It's just, are we listening? Right, right exactly. And it's also not going to be easy. Yes. Like you, you have not, it hasn't been like oh, you were no. called to ministry and every single day right. you're like, oh, playing no, hopscotch you know, all it, the way here. You know what I mean? Like, no. You're still going to get hit with things and it's going to make Absolutely. you feel like you can't work. Like you, maybe this isn't for me because, you know, something hits you so hard. Absolutely. So it might oh, cut, man. try to derail you, Absolutely. but you have to stand strong in the word, stand strong in your purpose Absolutely. and what God is calling you to. Absolutely. And yeah, making yeah. that your, that's your focus. Yeah. I was hit with some news that, um, it was kind of after we, had, after a relationship, we had kind of broken up and it was like in this like middle period, I was told from some friends of mine that this person had, uh, been with somebody else. In that moment, I literally remember saying to God, God, this is what I was running away from. This is exactly what, oh gosh, I don't want to cry, but (laughs) I was finally faced with this reality of what I was trying to run away from. And I remember it was early in the morning and I got up out of my bed and I just told my mom, I said, mom, pray. And I ended up on this bench by some baseball fields. And I just remember crying out to God, saying, God, this is, I need you. Like, this is what I was running away from. And I feel like now I'm faced with all of it right now, Lord. I need you. I need you. I need you to fill me up. I need you to fill me up because obviously I feel like you're the only one who can. You're Mm -hmm. the only one who can. Mm Mm-hmm. There is no substance. There's no relationship. There's no job. There's nothing in this life that is going to fulfill you but Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I just remember just crying out to God, like, God, I need you. I need you. And once again, having this heart posture of humility, like, you're enough, Lord. You are enough. And and that, that looked like going back home. And then after that prayer, did I feel good? No, I was still sad. Mm-hmm. I went I went back home time and time and time again. What was my posture? It was laying down beside my bed, crying out to God, God, fill me up. Fill me up. Restore me. God, heal my heart. Heal my heart, Lord. Because if you've called me here, then you have something good for me. Mm-hmm. And just because right now I'm experiencing some hardship and, you know, it feels like I... This is like making all senses in my body to run away, to escape, and maybe to even go back to my old ways because yeah. it was easier then. Yep. Um, maybe go back to this relationship because it was, it felt good then. Yeah. Um, God, I know you're good. I know you have something for me. I know you have someone for me, and I know that you're going to heal me. You have healed me. You have healed me. And so, um, I mean that, and and that those were literally my prayers constantly. And also, those were my prayers um, in my quiet time. But then it also looked like me reaching out to people and talking to my friends that were, you know, that that are here, talking to my pastor, um, talking to my parents. Um, I know I am blessed with parents that um, love God, and I know not every young person is blessed with that. Mm -hmm. But I talking to my mom, talking to my dad, like, Hey, this is what I'm experiencing. Um, you know, and them speaking life to me. Um, but I promise you, I mean, no matter what the devil might throw at you, whether it's a heartbreak or, you know, whatever, um, God is good. Mm -hmm. God is faithful. God is merciful. And, um, he heals. He's a God who heals. He's a God that restores. 
And um, these past few years, just uh, running after God faithfully, I have seen his love and his mercy continue and his faithfulness to continue to show up in my life. It's it's seriously so powerful to hear someone of, of your age. And I don't mean to make that light, like, oh, you're so young. But I mean, like, I just know, speaking from personal experience, the lessons I learned, I I didn't experience that young, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's awesome that you had parents that, that prayed over you and prayed mm-hmm. into you. And not only that you had that, but you responded accordingly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the biggest part. Like, I think the takeaway is it's not that you're being prayed over. It's not that you're being called... It's what you do with it, you know, mm-hmm. and you have a choice to to make hard decisions that seem really hard, but that aren't when you're there. Right. Versus, you know, like life is just like, ah, oh, it's easier just to do this. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it, it, but to hear you say that's awesome, mm-hmm. which is why I think the question that we ask everybody that is on this podcast is what makes winners in life? It's the motto of this church. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean to you? Um, I think making winners in life not every i think winning sometimes in life it's not it doesn't always look maybe in the circumstances that you're in it doesn't you're going to look around and it doesn't always look like winning but the part about making winners in life is the, is the process of it it's a process um and uh i think you're a winner if you're not giving up you're a winner if you don't throw in the towel i love you know, Dr. Savelle talks about that, is that having a no-quit attitude is, uh, you know, because if, if you never quit, you won't lose. Mm-hmm. And if God is for you, then who can be against you? Mm-hmm. And if he's with you, you're going to win. You're going to win, no matter what, no matter how hard it gets, um, no matter how sometimes that making, that process looks like, you know in the end, if God, if God, if if God sent His Son and Jesus won, Jesus overcome the cross. And if He lives on the inside of me, the same power lives on the inside of me. Then I know that I'm gonna win. Mm-hmm. If I continue to run after Him day after day after day, d- d- am I gonna fall sometimes? Am, am, am I gonna stumble? Yes. But I'm gonna get up. And I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna keep on running after Him. So to me, what does making winners in life means? It means continually to run after God no matter what. That's good. Boom. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> it's so awesome to there's there's so many amazing young men of God in this, in this community. And I, I'm just so happy you're one of them and you're yeah. leading the, the pack on that. It's awesome, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming. Yeah, CJ's yeah. the best of us. <laughs> one day we'll be there. Yeah. <sighs> Talking I, to you. I know, I know. One Whatever. day. Thank you, CJ, so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for listening. In the show notes, we're going to link the youth Instagram page because CJ does a lot with the youth. And if you are a youth, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we will see you next week for more Winning Conversations.